Season 1, Episode 10. Welcome to Forever Break Podcast. Now, the dynamic duo that dreads diarrhea. Here are your hosts, Leanne and Corey. Hello, 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 and welcome to the 10th episode of the Forever Break Podcast. Double Leanne. digits, baby. We made it. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you. Um, we are going to be touching on all things healing and naturopathic medicine on this episode. Um, you know, a lot of stuff about what are we putting into our body and what effect does it have? Um, how the use of foods and supplements can decrease our dependency on things like medications and how Big Pharma has changed that idea. We've then got a discussion with Dr. K, Dr. Karen DeVore, who is a naturopathic doctor and the chief medical advisor to Okuma Nutritionals. Yep, really good interview. Stick around for that. As always, be sure to check out the Forever Break website. Foreverbreak.com to take an even deeper dive into these topics. Quick quote. The art of healing comes from nature, not from the physician. Therefore, the physician must start from nature with an open mind by Paracelsus, not Paris Hilton. Focus on. You know that expression, uh, there's an app for that? Mm -hmm. Well, the same can be said for our medical industries, who seem to have the motto, there's a pill for that. So we at Forever Break try to be solution-based rather than spending our time pointing fingers and moaning about what is happening. So instead of going off on a big rant about Big Pharma, because trust me, we could, (laughs) we just simply ask that you guys take the time to question the motive behind a health decision or recommendation. Yeah, who benefits by you being dependent on a medication long term? How many other additional medications are needed to treat side effects? Um, what is the first priority of big pharma companies as instituted by law? I'll give you a little bit of tip. It has got nothing to do with health, and it rhymes with the word bear holders. Snare holders. You're close. It's very hunting related. <laughs> um, but our body's natural state is to be healthy. It's designed to heal itself, although sometimes it needs a little bit of a help. Although it might not be as much as you might think. We understand the negative impacts of our modern diet, rich in sugars and highly processed ingredients, and there's so many chronic conditions that can be caused or aggravated by the food you put into your mouth, which I'm sure you remember from episode 9. If not, go check that out. Yeah, Leanne, you can really speak to that with the old IBS thing. I can, literally. Gluten intolerant, all of these things. I really notice what I'm eating these days. It's very tricky for her because pretty much anything that she puts into her system has some sort of effect. So she's just got to be mindful and try and balance it out, really. Yeah, Um, not the easiest. No. Um, But did you guys know that modern medication as we know it has only been around since the Industrial Revolution in the 18th century? Nuh-uh. Since the early 1900s, up to 99% of base ingredients of pharmaceuticals, it's petroleum-based. Oh, my God. Before that, there were some wacky methods to treat illnesses. Doctors in the Middle Ages drained their patients of blood using leeches in an attempt to cure fevers and anything else that stumped them. Q Roos Bolton fans for you Game of Thrones book lovers out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. I hope you're all Game of Thrones book lovers. <laughs> um, but the the original method of treating ailments for thousands of years was medicinal plants and herbs that grow natively in many countries. In Western culture, we consider this Eastern medicine today because it was widely suppressed in the West. Yeah, if you're having some health issues, is it best just to take a prescribed medication that you don't know much about, or should you at least consider that there might be a natural remedy or ongoing practice that you could utilize to heal as well? Does a pain medication tell you the source of your aches and pains, or does it simply mask the discomfort until it goes away, if it goes away at all? These are all the kind of questions that we should be asking if we're interested in healing. So what if those ongoing headaches you have could simply be from dehydration? Wouldn't you rather just drink two more glasses of water every day versus taking aspirin and worrying about what that actually might be doing to your gut? Yeah, that stuff is not good down there. So if you're going to take it, definitely eat something first. Um, We're not saying that this is an easy change. It definitely is not. We're all guilty of looking for the easiest and quickest fix to a problem, and many of us do not like change. For instance, when my mother was first diagnosed with brain cancer, we were looking at medical recommendations of chemo and radiation, your standard therapy. Um, Our first question to the doctor was, what are some foods that you would suggest we have her eat along with these treatments in order to best prepare her body for the terrible side effects of them? Seems obvious, right? 
Um, it really absolutely shocked us the answer that we got, which was pretty much quoted as comfort foods because we don't expect these to do much besides extend her life for a few months. Obviously, that was very unacceptable and even more so shocking to us. That's so wild. I know Midwesterners love their comfort food, but if someone is sick... I mean, it's Come just on. like, as a doctor, I mean, you just think like going into a medical clinic that you'd at least be able to have the conversation with them of just like... Alternative medicine. Not that. Just like, I just want some like good stuff. I'm, I've got all these things that I'm going to be poisons, essentially, I'm going to be putting into my body. Yeah. What are things that I could do to counter that to boost my immune system? And it was just nothing. And that's it, exactly. It's just being more mindful about what we're actually putting into our bodies, which can be daunting because we're kind of taught to trust doctors over our own instincts right from an early age and there is so many different conflicting opinions out there at the expense of clean eating and supplements as well as the time it takes to learn about these things and it just gets a bit overwhelming it's easy to think we don't have the time to learn considering our hectic lifestyles but a little bit can go a long way in this topic so we ask you to stick with us and learn along with us as well yeah Here's a caveat first up. We're not saying that everyone should go all natural for every condition they experience. But you should be informed about natural alternatives. Whatever your ailment, find out how to treat it naturally. Is there an option? Um, you can start online or you can consult a naturopathic doctor like Dr. K. Um, you can make an informed decision about the long-term impacts of your health. And why not? If, you're, if you've been in this realm of just taking a medicine after medicine and it's not working... You know, at least just consider this. Yeah, and I can actually attest in my experience with my stomach issues. I've done all of the IBS medications and they didn't really help that much. And I've actually started using probiotics and I was very reluctant to start them. And I've noticed such a difference. I've talked about it a heap on this series, but I've just noticed such a difference in my personal experience with yep. um, probiotics. Yep. So. It's been really good. But obviously, we want you guys to learn from an expert as always. So let's get to our interview with Dr. Karen DeVore. Inspiring interview. So Karen DeVore, or Dr. K as we like to call her, is a naturopathic doctor who studied and received her doctorate at the prestigious Bastyr University, the world's leading university in the natural health sciences. Besides being the chief medical advisor to Okuma Nutritionals, Dr. K also works as the team physician for the Los Sueños International Ironman team. And yes, I was trying to sound very Spanish then. <laughs> Outside of her professional work, she is a world-class friend and mother. All right, well, we are here with Karen DeVore, or Dr. K, as we will continue to call her. How are you doing today, doctor? Doing well. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So, naturopathic doctors, I think there's a lot of people that might be hearing this term for the first time. What is a naturopathic doctor, and what is the difference between an ND and an MD? Yeah, great question. Um, so, naturopathic medicine is uh, typically considered a distinct system of primary care health. And um, as a naturopath, we focus on what maybe the public considers a holistic uh, health approach, meaning that we really concentrate on a whole patient wellness profile, emphasize, emphasizing prevention as well as treatment using the uh, more natural-minded modalities. As you have mentioned previously, it's really important for us to look at underlining causes of a patient's condition. And that just means that we're not just focusing primarily on symptomatic treatment. We are looking at a very whole patient yeah. focused uh, profile, and um, which means that our work is pretty in depth. And uh, in terms of how a naturopath or a naturopathic doctor, an ND, uh, compares with an MD, which is your traditional medical doctor that most of us grew up seeing in family practice, is that um, mostly in our treatment approaches. And that means that if you were to go to a naturopathic doc's office with a complaint of fatigue or mood fluctuations or weight management issues, you'll likely be worked up in a lengthy workup that includes diet and lifestyle and uh, past medical history in addition to lab work. And uh, consequently, the treatment plan is most likely, not most likely, but it could involve an herbal formulation 
and modifications focusing on the foundations of health in addition to any indicated pharmaceutical treatments Mm -hmm. or dietary modifications. So it's in terms of training and uh, the practical uses of naturopathic medicine versus medical, the traditional medical model, it's working more on prevention and underlining causes of disease rather than just symptomatic presentations. Yeah, you're concentrating on the healing as opposed to the getting rid of the symptoms. It's like getting it from the root. That's yeah, what I can think yeah, from it. That's um, in, a, in, a, in a broad picture. That's Yeah. I think the buzzword right now is the being is like upstream medical. I really have never heard of that. I, th- I mean, upstream. that's kind of something that I was just listening to recently where it's, it, you know, you're not focusing on you're focusing on like what is creating the problem, um, you know, related to poverty. Like you can deal with people when they're already poor. But why did a audience of people get poor? That's kind of the way that I think about it. Is that on this right track at all? Yeah, it, it is. And, you know, it's a what a privileged uh, way to think about things, right, for us yeah. kind of um, on one side. And that, um, you know, if I was living below the poverty line, my concentration probably wouldn't necessarily be on my cholesterol level and whether or not my kale is organic. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But, um, you know, looking at the prevention of the um, disease from starting and looking at uh, – making very intentional choices and trying to modify our our disease path or our health path using uh, less drastic measures is um, always going to be one of the first steps that a naturopath takes. But mm-hmm. really uh, looking at a patient in in the entire the entire picture of the patient's profile, including socioeconomic demographic, including um, home and lifestyle choices, including uh, trauma, including uh, their past medical history, it, it's all encompassing. And I think that that is something that all doctors want to do. But as a naturopath, the way that we mm-hmm. are set up to treat patients is very different than what uh, the way maybe a medical doc is set up to see a patient in that we don't take, we are allotted much um, more time with our patients and a standard patient visit could be 60 minutes or sometimes 90 minutes rather than the 15 minute model. And I, um, I think it's really important for me to clarify that it's not an adversarial differentiation, but rather um, an MD and an ND can be very complementary in their training and education focus and specialties. And just to be clear, I think that um, medical docs, naturopaths, chiropractors, NPs, PharmDs, Chinese medical practitioners, and DOs, they're all uniquely qualified in the ways that our medical peers may not be. And Mm -hmm. so the fact that we know that no two brains or no two bodies are exactly alike I think it's important to recognize that no two roads to optimizing health and wellness will be identical. And so yeah. the treatments shouldn't be identical. And thus, that's the beauty of integrative medicine. Yeah. And I guess with your interest um, in this field of study, that started before you had a family. So how has being a mother now impacted your learning more about what it is that we're actually putting into our bodies or what it is that you're putting into your, your children's bodies? Yeah, you know, this is such a um, vast topic that I could spend hours on. Yeah. <laughs> and um, you're going to have to kind of rein me in on this. Okay. But um, should we make a safe word? I think, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We'll say, when you say think pineapple. That, um, really, the short answer is that it's reminded me of the million different small decisions that each one of us make throughout the day yeah. that impact our health. Yeah. And how important all of those tiny little decisions are. And uh, what I mean by that is that to go from before, to backtrack a little bit, and I'll circle around, it takes three months for an egg or sperm to develop Mm -hmm. in a person's body to the point of readiness for available fertilization. Mm -hmm. So before uh, conception even happens, the three months in somebody else's body already is going to determine your DNA, wow, your health profile. Yeah, me right? too. That's so fascinating. When you think about that, 
as um, and a doc and a mom, the responsibility three months prior to conception is already huge. Yeah. So all of these little things on, um, am I going to throw down that bag of Lay's potato chips or um, is, uh, is using, you know, this particular bug spray really important? It's not just focusing on one thing, but it's all of the tiny little decisions that we make throughout the day that kind of accumulates to our health profile. And some of the stuff as a mom, you just got to let go. And some of that you've got to really put your foot down on. Mm -hmm. And, um, I think as a mom and as a doc, who's constantly learning, I think the biggest thing is modeling the behaviors, not just for physical health, but also emotional health, Mm -hmm. um, modeling proper communication techniques and, uh, conflict resolution, all of these things that really and stress management that really play into a person's health down the line are more valuable than just one single don't eat junk food, you know, rule that I could be regimented about. Yeah. It's all of the tiny little decisions that um, we make throughout the day. I think that's become more blaring to me mm-hmm. and the importance of those decisions, I guess. Well, and especially yeah. when you take yourself out of the equation and now you're making this, you have the responsibility to these youngins that are running around and for however much time, um, you know, you're a full decision maker. And then as they grow older, that kind of starts to slowly wane away before they become their own decision maker. So it becomes right the, from the aspect of, well, I'm now the one that's perfectly and absolutely in charge of everything that this child is putting into their system to, well, now they're off to school. So now the school or maybe some friends and sleepovers and stuff like that. So some other people have some say. And then by the time they're off to college and they've got a meal plan or whatever that might be, they're completely on their own. So then it kind of goes from now you've just kind of hopefully instilled some good habits into them. But yeah. I would imagine that it would, you know, neither Leanne and I can have any relation to this, but I would imagine that it has to have a, uh, a pretty good effect. Yeah, I think um, I to speak to what you were just mentioning, I think teaching our children to think through a problem and giving them some guidelines as to and experiences as to all of the different opportunities that those choices will give them, you know, is really important. Um, I, I will quite frequently say it's just as important for me to teach my children to throw down a big bowl of kale as it is to teach them how to eat sugar properly. Sugar is a part of our world, yeah. just like an Xbox or an iPhone. And if I don't teach them how to utilize these resources properly and to establish good uh, boundaries within utilizing these in our everyday world, somebody else will, or they have to do it on their own. So, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, exposing them to lots of different opportunities to learn and and also to back off and let them throw down on a Snickers bar and then see how they feel, (laughs) you know, after it's all, it's all kind of let them learn from themselves. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I was lucky enough to be a a, a friend of yours and actually get to live with you for Mm -hmm. a month or so while you were in school. And and I got this was that was my introduction to naturopathic um, medicine. And it was just fascinating for me to to learn about it and see some of the stuff that you were studying. But obviously it raised questions. So that's kind of my next question is what are some barriers that you would say um, a lot of people who maybe haven't heard of this and they're just trying to understand it better. What are some things that people are like that question about this, this field? Yeah, I think one of the biggest barriers is just how do I start? It's so overwhelming. What do I do? And um, I think that can be that's true of lots of different um, modifications that we attempt to make in life. And it's just, it's very overwhelming. Uh, oh my gosh, what supplements, how many, what's the dosage? What's, what, what am I doing wrong? And, um, because of that, I think people 
go really hard in one direction and then it's just not sustainable, either financially or, um, you know, your personal resources, your time, your energy, or they find that they are, they don't, they're not having good interactions with their friends groups because they're trying to be so holistic and clean minded. So a lot of times I think uh, prioritizing what uh, we call the foundations of health is a great first step. And that is what I mean by that is looking at sleep, hydration, um, movement or exercise, your relationships, and then your nutrition. And those are all the building blocks to our health. And if you can just start by examining where you are, what you can improve upon, what you, what are your boundaries, your non-negotiables, I'm not going to give up my espresso, I'm not going to give up you know, my Snickers bar or, or these are, this is what I'm willing to give up, or maybe this is where I'm really lacking, or I don't drink enough water, or I don't get good sleep. Just starting with acknowledging where you are and what your non-negotiables are is a great way to Mm -hmm. start modifying your lifestyle. Well, it's like any, anything in life is about compromise, right? Exactly. Every, everything is the best way to have a nice balanced uh, life, as the Libra here would like me to mention balance. <laughs> yeah. Um, but so all of these things, you know, they're, they're all related to health. That's why you would take these supplements, you know, it, it, but healing. So like this, oh, the whole topic of this episode is about healing. And uh, when I think of the word healing, I think of identifying the root cause of an issue and finding a remedy for that. So first of all, what does healing mean to you? And then in your opinion, what role does the mind play in healing? Yeah, I think that healing is a process. Mm -hmm. And I think we often hear of the gift of healing. We wish that for others who are going through a painful time or you hear that Mm -hmm. in, you know, um, self or motivating talks. It's the gift of healing. And it is a it's a really sacred process and it can be the process of becoming free of an injury or disease, or it can be for some healing means to be cured. Um, but for me, it's the actual process of going Mm -hmm. from an unbalanced state or disease state for some to a much more health-minded, sustainable state. And Mm -hmm. um, I don't mean to be convoluted. Um, Ultimately, we do the root of your disease or or dysfunctioning uh, systematic symptom is, um, it's crucial. But for someone, I think where I am as a mom and just in my own process of learning as a physician, I think it's healing is much more about the process. And it's so multifactorial Mm -hmm. um, that although the root cause is really important, it's just a very complicated evolution that a person goes through. And Mm -hmm. for some, it just means healing means I no longer have stomach pain. And for some healing means I need to go back to my childhood trauma and retrace those steps and ensure that I am able to express myself. So healing is a very multi-faceted process of getting from one point to ideally a better point in your health. And um, I think it's so individualized. Yeah, Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah, I'm curious about, you know, I had the... um... I, I was kind of going through this a little bit, watching with the all the drama that my family's had just over the last few years with my yeah, mom. They've been through a lot, Corey. Uh, yeah, I'm and to it's hear been about some of the hardships, including your mama's passing. Well, thank you very much. It's been obviously just this amazing learning experience, and we, you know, throughout the process, we we dove deeper into naturopathic medicine, and then kind of since her passing, we've had that this thing with my dad where he was he as the caretaker he just got used to living this life with stress and Mm -hmm. after she's passed now and some time has passed we found that he continued to like have these same he would build stress into his life because it's now become the norm it's become his habit so over the last couple of months since we've had the fortune to be able to spend the time with him 
we've tried to help him develop this practice of relieving that, just saying you have control over some of the stress that's on your plate. Let's just take it away. And it's okay not to have all these things going on. And I think throughout that process, some of his actual physical ailments have actually gone away. And I'm just kind of curious if that's something that you've looked at and if that's something that you kind of find to be more regular is that people can yeah. create these things mentally. Yeah. You know, um, first, I want to say, like, what a gift you have given your father to just be there and to hold that for him and be a sounding space, because that really is a hard thing to do, not only as somebody's child, an adult child to a grieving parent, but also just in general. Um, so good on you too for, for doing just that. Just very fortunate that we had the time to be yeah, able to go Yeah, we feel like the lucky ones. So. <laughs> yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and um, let's talk about just the physical, how the mind and the body, yeah. the internal and external world of our bodies kind of coexist. So, um, you know, just to give a kind of a, a generalized example, if you're stressed, physically, your breathing is going to be different. Um, you're not doing these full inhalation and exhalation breaths. You are um, consequently not getting enough or as much, excuse me, oxygen. You are doing shallow breathing. And what that does to your posture, as well as your heart rate, is going to be significant and take a toll on your body. But also biochemically, your cortisol, hormonally, your cortisol is spiking in response to the stress or the trauma that's happening around you. So it is circling back around and your nervous system is also going to respond to it and that you're going to be in a fight or flight, not only physical posture, but also neurologically and biochemically, your body is looking for that bear to outrun. And so what happens is that while it's as simple as maybe breathing, biochemically and kind of behind the scenes, your body is in this stressed space. And if you do this over a prolonged period, the muscles start to adapt to holding the body that way. Your spine your diaphragm becomes kind of cramped. You're, you're presumably maybe not getting um, all of the other lifestyle uh, components in uh, uh, relaxing, stretching, sleeping well, hydrated, being hydrated, uh, movement, yoga, uh, in, re- enjoying time with friends, all on, a, on account of being stressed. So mm-hmm. over a prolonged period of time, people have significant physical ailments that are related to something as um, as uh, what kind of we kind of brush off as being stressed. But it, it is significant. Uh, what we experience emotionally is often manifested in what our symptom presentation can be physically. So there, there is a, um, a direct correlation. Yeah. 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 I know that that's something that we've learned in our, um, we did an episode on food and it's something that we've found as well, just how, how important all these different areas of the body are, are connected to the mind. And there's so much uh, research about gut health and stuff that's linked to the mind it's as incredible. well. And I just think all yeah, these links, really you, you kind of assume that everything starts there, but actually it's it's just everything's intertwined, isn't it? It really and is. So taking, yeah. And um, taking us over to supplements. So how should supplements play a role in our everyday lives and on our diets? Are there any supplements that everyone should take or does it kind of vary person to person? Yeah, great question. Um, You know, I think that to get the best answer, I say go to somebody who is trained in nutrients and supplementation, whether it be an MD, Mm -hmm. DO, DC, somebody who has proper training that can really assess your personal profile because you can, I, yeah. we can all get into a, um, put somebody in a bad space if I give a, a broad recommendation and just that. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's my disclaimer that said, yeah. <laughs> I don't think that supplements are required for everyone. And ideally if, if a person has, a, fan, a fantastic, healthy foundation for health already built in, they're not necessarily going to be needing to supplement in quite the same way as if somebody who has um, 
maybe has a disrupted gut lining or an underlining mm-hmm. condition like ulcerative colitis where they're not, or, or, or a condition where they're not able to absorb nutrients properly are going to need a much different supplementation route. But, um, I, supplements are just that they are to supplement your, where your diet and lifestyle aren't able to fill up completely. So I think, um, Mm -hmm. we all need something a little bit different, but I will say a blanket statement, the more fruits and vegetables of Mm -hmm. a diverse color and, and profile that you can get in your body, the less supplementation that you're going to need. And the more focus that you put on the foundations of health, like I mentioned, sleep, movement, uh, quality relationships and hydration, the less you will need supplementation. But it's there to simply yeah. supplement your your established health profile. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that makes sense. I mean, I haven't ever really been some a big supplement person. Yeah. And we should put a disclaimer on people who are like, okay, sick, I can eat my cheeseburger and drink my beer and I'll just take some supplements and I'm fine. <laughs> That's not how it right, works. Right. <laughs> yeah. right. And, and, you know, I, I don't think Oh, I, as, as a doc, you always have to give that disclaimer, yeah. <laughs> but I think you know, that's kind of, it's people know that, but, um, I, I, I try and stay away from like a one size fits all yeah. supplement regime because it's, it, it, two bodies aren't the same and don't need the same. Yeah. Well, that's it. Like Corey and I, we, we eat the same diet, but I have, um, I have IBS and I've, you know, I've had gastritis in the past and I've had all these stomach issues. And we can eat the same thing and I'll have like such a stomach ache where I'll feel tired and things like that. And then he'll be completely fine. So, you know, that as an example is supplements, you can eat the same as someone, but it's all dependent on your body. Yeah. Yeah. And just, you know, going back to epigenetics or the way our, um, you know, our stress response Mm -hmm. is different and therefore we burn out of different nutrients um, and um, or you may have an um, MTHFR issue where you're not methylating things. So, you know, um, you can really get into trouble, uh, following these regimens that are just kind of blanket yeah. statements yeah. out there, um, or what people should be doing. Um, go to somebody who's willing to look, take an in-depth look at your, not only your lab work, but you know, your, your daily lifestyle mm-hmm. and, um, they can help. Yeah. And I've got a pretty iron stomach, so don't follow my diet. <laughs> um, I've, I'm wondering about, so this is something that I kind of was doing without even knowing that I was doing it and it's intermittent fasting. So a couple yeah. of years ago is when I discovered this and I think I heard it on a, maybe like a Joe Rogan podcast or somewhere like that. And then I, I realized just that my lifestyle was kind of a, um, a 14, 10 intermittent fast, just naturally the way that I was living. Cause I don't really usually wake up and eat right away. Right. And then I started being more mindful of it and just being like, okay, let's try and do like a, um, a 16, eight. And so I've been really pretty consistently doing that for the last couple of years and I've felt pretty good doing it. I just feel like my brain's a little bit sharper overall, but I'm wondering if that's something that you've um, looked into and it's, if it's something that you recommend. Yeah. You know, again, um, disclaimer, got to do what works for you and what you feel with, where you see and feel the difference and the changes. Um, I don't think intermittent, intermittent fasting is across the board for everyone, but mm-hmm. that said, it's hard to ignore how humans have evolved and we evolved in times of fast and fam- famine. We have, mm-hmm. um, we evolved from, um, time periods where we were hunters and gatherers. So intermittent fasting, while it wasn't this organized way of eating, it's a very, very much a part of our, of of human history. It's very much ingrained in the way that our bodies know to work. Mm -hmm. So, um, and you see it even in, uh, predominant religions, uh, the, the idea of fasting and prayer, Mm uh, it's, it's very much a part of our culture, but also our, our makeup and our ancestral uh, components of, that created our bodies to be the way that they are. So that said, I think it's um, while not ideal for somebody for every single person, I think it is a, an incredible tool to uh, really understand and experiment with. And um, I think the component that people forget about intermittent fasting is is the 
predictability or the consistency of it is what really Mm -hmm. is helpful. And, and by that, I mean, not going out and getting that uh, three o'clock in the morning piece of pizza after hitting the bar with your buddies mm-hmm. and then being like, oh, mm-hmm. well, I eat, I, you know, I, I, I fast until nine o'clock every morning. So the next day you start throwing down on pancakes and a hangover breakfast. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's, it's the idea of uh, just being consistent and that you are training your body and allowing your body to have the, um, the turnover processes and all the beneficial biochemical things that happen when we are doing the intermittent fasting period, uh, allow that to happen mm-hmm. properly and consistently so that you can kind of glean the health effects, you know, yeah. down the line. But yeah, it, it's a, it's a, it's a great tool. And I think that for a lot of adults, the idea of fasting, especially again, in like, you know, the U S um, where consumerism and, gluttony tends to be mm-hmm. predominant. It's mm-hmm. um, it's a great thing to put ourselves in check and to just remind ourselves of being intentional in what we're putting in our bodies. As yeah. well as what it's like to be hungry because like, I just feel like in our societies, people are just like, oh, I eat because it's this time. You're not actually hungry. That, that, phrase, I'm, that phrase, I'm starving, yeah. really gets tossed around pretty oh, lightly. Yeah. I, I, I'm guilty <laughs> of that one as well. <laughs> and I'll give Leanna a shout out here because she's in her mid 20s and I, there's no way I could have done intermittent fasting in my mid 20s and she's been so pretty consistent I've been I'm doing impressed. it since I was about 16 but I was always um I've always been an athlete you know in school or in college and stuff and I've always been to the gym and it was something it was was not intentional um so much for the health effects I was very for the, the wrong reasons like oh I want to look good but um it was also just really easy for me because I like to sleep late unlike Corey so I like <laughs> if I eat at eight o'clock at night and I don't eat until like 12 o'clock the next day that's fine so I've only actually gone a few hours without eating yeah just sleep just sleep hours. just sleep for 10 to 12 hours and you're <laughs> how okay. wonderful, how wonderful. But, but to your point I think that if we look at the way that and I'm not saying let's model teenagers and their health practices mm-hmm. by any means, but if we look at the mm-hmm. body's natural rhythm through mm-hmm. the maturation process, we see that intermittent fasting is something that happens on on its own. And then whether it's cultural, traditional, you know, we kind of start saying, oh, eight o'clock in the morning, we've got to eat that breakfast before you make that bus or eat breakfast yeah. is the most important part of the day, thanks to Kellogg's, you know. Yep. marketing yeah. schemes or you know um but if we just look at the body's natural rhythm it's oftentimes that teenagers don't want to eat breakfast or mm-hmm. i don't know about you but i certainly grew up with my parents have throwing down a cup of coffee and being completely satisfied with that until mm-hmm. the noon time you know uh, moment where they were going to break their fast and that wasn't intermittent fasting that was just the way of the 70s so yeah, just um, you know I, I, th- I think we see like i mentioned before we not only do we see this in like religious spaces and evolutionarily but we see it in the body's natural rhythms and mm-hmm. sometimes we as a cultural <laughs> we as a culture we just beat that out of them so we're we're yeah. i think we're doing a better job in returning to mindfulness and the intentional functionality of health practices and you're, so you're not only just a naturopath. You since 2013, you have been the team physician for the Los Sueños Ironman team. I hope I'm not butchering that pronunciation. No, you're perfect. Perfect. Um, yeah. Yes. <laughs> and um, so, what changes did you implement with the athletes, and what differences have they had over time? So, um, great question. Um, an Ironman, or or a, you know, an athlete, let alone a triathlon. Mm-hmm. A triathlete is a very dedicated, different breed of person. Human. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a humanoid, like I, I love and refer to that Humanoid. As. And, um, but the biggest thing is that um, I have just really discussed the importance of, and I don't mean to belabor the point, but this is my mm-hmm. soapbox, is the foundations of health. Mm-hmm. Taking days off, allowing for proper recovery. Mm-hmm. proper hydration, getting our fuel from a whole foods diet rather than just a protein bar or goo on the go, mm-hmm. allowing for some cross training and uh, that's not focused on speed training or you know climbing on mountains, um, that's allowing for 
the muscles to work in different ways and complementary and synergistic approaches. So really um, just refocusing some of the athletes on prioritizing these simple concepts that we've been told since childhood to stretch, yeah. mm-hmm. to, dr- to drink water in the morning, to s- sleep, allow our bodies to recover, to take our days off, to have the day of rest, to make, to, you know, stress management, just to refocus and prioritize the foundations of health has made a huge impact, not only on performance, but on just the joy of training and you know this is like a very competitive even at the most basic amateur level the amount of hours that a triathlete will put in to training Mm -hmm. and to thinking about a race and to preparing for it physically um and and you know just reorganizing resources and time is enormous so just the idea of prioritizing stress management is a big deal um, mm-hmm. uh, my brother is um, on the Ironman team and um, he is so focused but sometimes gets lost in the focus and the training and stops having a good time so mm-hmm. I asked him to do go, go to a yoga studio I asked him to do dance classes um, uh, we started working on a lot of mind-body uh, connecting, connecting and um thinking about, it, it sounds very silly, but uh, having a theme song, you, we always, uh, the American way is seeing Rocky run up the stairs mm-hmm. and having that mm-hmm. awesome song. There are times in our lives that, you know, not when we're not running a triathlon, that we are just have to focus and get through and push through to the other side. And a theme mm-hmm. song, man, it gets us through every time. <laughs> So just having, I'm so curious. Yeah, you know, just, what's your theme song? Um, it's um, you could it's called Sally, and it is just okay. like a silly little song that I have worked out to for the last five years, and it nice. is something that I do burpees to, something that I plank to. But my body, the the why this works is that my body knows when that song comes on. For five minutes, I'm going to be mm-hmm. in grueling hell. So my brain kicks in and says, you got this. It's going to be horrendous for these five minutes. But I can hear the song track in my head and my body and brain do this incredible synergistic thing. And my adrenaline spikes, my heart rate responds. And all of a sudden, this glucose dump happens, this endorphin dump happens, and I get this great response to this theme song and for five minutes and however many seconds I can push through. So uh, that is kind of some of the little tricks that we have just prioritized um, with the Ironman team. And and again, not only has the timing and uh, their performance increased, but just the joy uh, and of the process has really improved. And that's what it's all for, right? In the end, that's hopefully what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we've got the team physician for Los Sueños Ironman team, naturopathic doctor, and also an amazing wife and mother. <laughs> Thank you. And also chief medical advisor to o- Okuma Nutritionals. So I would love for you to tell us a little bit about Okuma Nutritionals and um, obviously the big product you all have there, one of many, is Wulong Tea. Um, and what is that and what does that do? Yeah. Thank you for, um, all of, for tooting my horn there. That made me feel wonderful. <laughs> I appreciate it. We can play, we can play a theme song in the yeah, background. Yeah. I, so you know, I'll like, <laughs> email you my little, uh, my, my theme song there. Um, please do. So, um, let's see. So Okuma Nutritionals, uh, started off as a, um, company that had a 20 year track record for selling Wulong tea, which is a sustainably uh, grown and really uh, high quality oolong tea. And um, as I think the world knows, tea is considered one of the oldest medicines, not to mention the most widely uh, consumed beverage, surprisingly above beer and coffee. So um, 
it has just this incredible historical use and it has so much science behind it to support uh, Oolong specifically has a lot of science to support its um, great contributions to health. So Wulong was a specific varietal that, um, okay. that Okuma Nutritionals specialized in. So um, with that track record um, and uh, for quality and uh, sustainability and um, and excellence, really, we were able to start introducing some new formulations that were really not only in high demand, but um, really easy to incorporate into daily use. Mm -hmm. So having a great company to back formulations that um, meet, that exceed really um, industry standards, but also allow for general public use is a rare thing. um, And that, you know, most of us grow up getting our multivitamin from a big box store and uh, we can't guarantee the quality in those products so being able to have yeah. um, a mother company that could um, really help get sustainable and um, quality products out to the public was a it was is a really great thing to be a part of yeah Nice to it's like to be that change that's out there because so many times um, I've been in the supermarkets and I'm like, wow, like I don't actually trust what I'm reading on this on this box. Like I just feel like they're missing things out. So that's really awesome that you guys are actually being completely transparent and um, healthy with your products. So that's yeah, amazing to you. hear. It's it's a big um, it's it's a big difference in between uh, supplements that are mass produced and medical grade supplementation, and because of that big difference there's a big price difference and trying yeah. to kind of have the best of both worlds is, mm-hmm. um, is a really cool thing to be a part of. Yeah. So aside from Wulong tea, of course, if you could recommend one change to any of our listeners to improve their overall health, what would that be? Yeah. <laughs> Great question. And, um, surprisingly it has nothing to do with supplementation, but I think it's movement. I think it is so underrated and movement can be in the form of a yoga practice or, you know, if you're one of those crazy humans that enjoy sprinting and climbing Mm -hmm. mountains by all means, but simple as stretching and allowing Mm -hmm. our bodies to get the benefits from the, from biochemically and physically from just daily movement and increasing your heart rate. I think it is, the best use of anyone's time throughout the day. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it is something that comes back to us tenfold, if not more, by um, just having a little bit of mindfulness and intentionality in our movement every day. Corey's giving himself a pat on the back here because he's been telling me since we've met stretching will keep you young stretching is the thing that you need to do because I never stretch I keep getting Karen (laughs) good good I mean just the biochemical uh, feedback that you get once you start moving every day it's um I mean there's nothing better than endorphins so you know I I just think it is the the, very underutilized um medicine so mm-hmm. that is and my- I'll give a very recent example to just kind of prove your point is that I woke up today just mentally just not fully being there. And um, as we were getting closer and honing in on this conversation with you, I was just like, OK, I just kind of want to be on my game here, but I'm just not feeling it. So Leanne and I went for a little lunchtime, little six mile mountain bike ride. Oh, that's great. Um, nothing too strenuous, but just got outside in the sun and got our bodies moving. And I came back, took a shower and, and just started great. feeling yeah. really good. So, yeah, if you're not moving too much and you're listening to this, go out, put this podcast on, take a walk. And, yeah, and, uh, you know, the, and, you know, the reality is in a lot of places in the world, um, people are not able to leave their homes. Right. And it's really, you kind of get down on yourself and be like, I haven't been able to go to the gym or, you know, I usually walk to work or, you you know, movement isn't something that I'm able to do, but, um, just prioritizing movement in our own homes is, is, um, can be incredibly helpful, 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 mindful, and, um, valuable really not only 
emotionally and cognitively, but like I said, biochemically, it just, it's a catalyst for all the good things that happen in our bodies. Yeah. Really good point. Dr. K, thank you so much. We appreciate it very much. Your thank you. Great opportunity. Your experience, your knowledge, and um, we're, we're so excited to just um, share this with you. And it was great, obviously, for me personally to just be able to reconnect for a minute. So thank you so much. Thank you very much for having me. Appreciate you guys. Let's unpack that. All right. Well, thank you so much to Dr. K., um, as I'm sure you might have picked up on up on that, um, Dr. Karen has been one of my good friends for about 10 years, although we've gone our separate ways over the last few. I was able to be living in her house for a few weeks while she was in the middle of her um, education as a naturopathic doctor, so I kind of got to bear witness to that, and it really just kind of got my mind. It introduced me to that idea of alternative medicines and stuff, and I, I've been just kind of curious about it and interested in it more and more what about you Lee yeah I think it's quite fascinating to hear um her advice because she's not saying oh you should just take all of these supplements and you should do Mm -hmm. this she's saying educate yourself on what your body's like but you know I know people who you know you go in the open their drawer and they have about 15 different supplements and they've tried to like get me on board with with it all and I'm kind of like well I eat quite a balanced diet um, do I really need all of this stuff? Yeah. And then as I've gotten older, obviously I'm more aware of what kind of things that I will need. Yep. Um, I'm just a bit too cheap to buy them, but I, now I'm growing up, maybe I'll buy them. And I like that practical advice of just movement. I just think that that's just yeah. such a easy thing to do. Even if you are in quarantine, like she said, you can just kind of move throughout your house, just do some things. Which I can really attest to you guys, that the home workout situation, like just doing like a little circuit in your in your garden or your yard, if you're American, <laughs> um, or your living room. It's like I, I've been getting better results doing home workouts than I usually do at the gym. Yeah. So that's pretty good. Yeah, really good stuff. Take it further. So taking it further, if you do want to get some more information on Dr. K and Wulong Tea, do make sure you check out the website okumanutritionals.com. We will have it in the show notes, but basically it's the company website Okuma and they have a bunch of different products and all recommended by Dr. K herself. Yeah, some great blog articles and everything that she has written as well. So a good resource of information if you're just kind of curious about learning more about this. And then obviously if you're interested, can't hurt to try out some of the products that they might have on there. Um, Our executive producer is a big fan of Dr. Michael Greger, who we have mentioned in a previous episode. Um, nutritionfacts.org is his website and he has a large library of nutrition and health videos there. He uses an evidence-based approach to healing while promoting sensible natural solutions. And if you just don't want to read, you just want to watch a movie, why don't you watch that vitamin movie or vitamin depending on where you're from. So that's free on Amazon Prime Videos or free on thatvitaminmovie.com. Go check it out. Learn some stuff. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode on healing. Lots of great information on how we really can cut down our pharmaceutical usage. You can check out Dr. K's naturopathic tea company at okumanutritionals.com. Not only do they have great supplement products and tea, but also an abundance of articles written by Dr. K herself. And remember to check out episode 11, where we are going to be taking that next step and looking at mindful exercise. We're going to be exploring what this actually all means, what's the difference between regular exercise and mindful exercise, ways you can do it at different paces. And we have not one, but two interviews. Mr. Voiceover Guy, you're up. Thanks, guys. Subscribe now to the Forever Break podcast on your favorite platform, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and more. If you enjoyed this episode, help us out and leave a five-star review. And remember, you can find all the juicy details discussed in this episode in the show notes at foreverbreak.com slash podcast.